if you can't dodge it, ram it. That's what they say. Well, then apparently Chrysler Mopar should have actually built these dodges to be able to handle something. Here's the current condition of this uh, driver's side backing plate on this dually. I knocked on the whole assembly with a chisel against the head of the bolt like I said I was going to. Then I took a brass punch behind in between, knocked it some more, and uh, I got this steel bushing here just to cover that brake line because I'm going to have to clean this up enough it won't catch on fire and uh, put the grounding clamp here and weld on it in place here after I get that straighter. As you can see, I was a little out of my head and I took the mounting bolts off even though I still have a hub on here. And far as I know, I don't have a spare wheel seal underneath the back seat or something for this. And as long as that seal's leaking, excuse me, not leaking, I really don't want that extra labor. It's almost noon already. And far as I know, I do have the appropriate socket for the nuts in here because I know I've had to do a wheel seal on this before. I'm pretty sure. Maybe not. I can say that these later model, or little later model Dodges, I do prefer here because it has the outboard brake drum. It's not one unit. On the older ones, the studs were knocked through the drum into the hub to hold it all together so that when either that or they were bolted on with nuts on the back sides of the studs uh, so that it made it one unit and you had to pull the hub just to do any little work on the brakes which meant okay you change the wheel seal those were all so notorious for the wheel seals going out because with lots of miles on the axle especially if it was carrying uh, heavy loads the spindle would get worn right where the seal rubs and a new seal wouldn't last long because it was actually metal going and you'd have to uh, measure that with a caliper and uh, buy a speedy sleeve for it. The speedy sleeve is meant to just go on a short surface so you'd have to come up with some other tool to drive it all the way over the spindle. I had to do that both sides of an old 90 cap and chassis Dodge that's out in the pasture on the farm. Back in the days I was actually able to drive the darn thing over 10 years ago. Anyway, this uh, um, actuator for the park brake, I think maybe, maybe it's not bent. I'll figure it out. Here's the little bolt. I, uh, frankly, my brain is so messed from all this frustration, including all the geopolitical nonsense and natural things going on that I took this apart. I watched how I took it apart, and dang if I can remember exactly how it goes back together. It was like so, and uh, then this, and this, with this bushing in there, but this, that I do have a new one in the kit, that's to actually pull the little adjuster, keep the brakes adjusted, was on the back side of this. This has to be able to slide back and forth on this here bushing and uh, so forth. As for the little bolt itself, I took, I had to take it to the vise to have some place to uh, knock it out. So the little nut here, I threaded it on just to the flush with the tip. It's already a lock nut, so it's already cramped, so it didn't hurt to bang on it a little more. I managed to knock it out of that bushing because it was bent in, uh, I don't know, maybe a 30 degree angle or something. Uh, thankfully, it wasn't a 45 degree angle like I thought, although knocking it out may have straightened it a little bit. I don't know. It apparently is supposed to fit snug in here with those little uh, knurling it has keep this from rotating for some reason I guess obviously it's not gonna work so good anymore 
because this side has the little flange for it to go against and the rest of it appears to be smooth in there uh, first just like this I stuck it down in the vise and just crimped the part that was bent flat as much as I could in the vise then I took with the nut on it and actually in pretty much this position with the nut threaded on it and had it resting on the flat surface of the vise and uh, took the ball peen hammer and just continually tapped on it um, not banging on it hard because I don't want to damage it bend it the other way or break it gradually got it to point that it appears to have gotten pretty well straight then took the nut off slowly rotated it on the flat surface of the vise pinging it with that ball peen hammer just tap tap tapping it all the way around hoping it would retain its tensile strength that it wouldn't bend easily on its own and certainly that it wouldn't break this is just a retaining bolt to hold things together but considering what it holds together it's important I wish that uh, these knuckleheads in manufacturing hadn't stopped providing this interesting little bolt because I don't think it's going to work too good to go get myself a grade 8 quarter inch bolt and lock nut and washers and stuff because of the way this is made if I have any problems with it that's what I'm going to do I am not paying several hundred dollars for somebody's junk just because it's got a bolt that may be rusted out and in worse condition than mine so it is what it is so uh, yeah Bosch parts this is a Dana 80 axle on a 2001 Dodge uh, four-wheel drive dually it's the ram 3500 i hope nobody else has to go through this nonsense thanks for watching